Well, I am on a field trip. Here I am on location at the Warner Brothers Records corporate offices in beautiful downtown Burbank. This interview opportunity came upon us so suddenly that our decoupage, oh, what are they called, the shuttle cam unit, they only had one camera today, so you'll please have to bear with us. Also, I had no time to do my eyes, so I'm not coming out from behind my foster grants. Anyhow, you know who I am. I am here today with Julie Cruz, vocalist on Warner Brothers Records. She has a beautiful album, Floating Into the Night, which I'm sure is available on LP, cassette, and CD. David Lynch and Angelo Badalamente producers, Twin Peaks, Blue Velvet, a recent appearance on Saturday Night Live with the Dice Man, controversial Andrew Dice Clay, Industrial Symphony, not to mention that she actually floats when she sings. Julie, hi, how are you, and where did this all begin? It, it seems like you suddenly just popped into our lives like a little super trooper, <laughs> to quote Abba. <laughs> thank you, Summer. It's an honor for me to be here. Oh, thank it you really so is. much. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> Thanks. Um, where did all this begin? Yeah, I mean, we know that you didn't just land in a UF from a UFO. You did, well, how do you well, know that? Well, we don't that? know that. <laughs> it seems By the like... way, I have to tell you something. Andrew okay. Dice Clay wants a date with you. He does. <laughs> Is this a true story? It's a true story. Oh, and how did Andrew Dice Clay find out about me? Right here on Decapod. Oh, you think he gets public access? Yeah. Well, we'll see what I can do about that. But Julie, tell me, I mean, were you, you were a genius child, weren't you? No, I was a precocious child. I well, was a I spoiled heard... child, a disturbed child, a fearful child. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Those are my favorite guests. <laughs> no, honestly, I heard that when you were five years old, you began to become a musician. Yeah. And at 14, you were a master of the French horn and en enrolled in, in a university to study. Yes. Yeah. Now, tell me that is not genius. Ah, uh, well, it's... A little neurotic, maybe, but when I was when I was little, I remember I started down on the the old upright piano that was you know kind of gray and creepy, and uh -huh. I'd play something similar to Scriabin, you know, right. and uh, then I progressed on to music lessons and got into the French horn, and which is very a, difficult. It's not an easy instrument to learn, well, is no, it? No, no, I'd bitten my horn before. Actually, there's teeth marks in my horn. I'm, it's just, it's really a frustrating instrument. Oh, really? So that was mm -hmm. an anger. An <laughs> anger tantrum. <laughs> an outlash at the, <laughs> the in French. The hatred clown. <laughs> now, your album, Flooding Into the Night, is this your first album? Yeah. Well, that is amazing because it has gotten so much acclaim for a, for a first album. I know, I'm lucky. And I am, I must tell you, I'm very little, a little disappointed that it wasn't released on 8-track. But, of course, <laughs> I'm behind the times a little bit and I'm trying to catch up. Your voice, Julie, is, is so... Um, did you do, take a lot of voice lessons? Not really. I, I, I'm a singer-singer, a belter, but uh -huh. I've never sang uh, soft before. It's too scary to sing soft. Now, but, what is the story behind singing soft? I mean, some people would think that that would be the easier way to go. Well, I was, actually, I was trying to find singers to sing in uh, Blue Velvet. Uh -huh. for David Lynch, oh, I see. Uh, a song called Mysteries of Love. And right. I, I sent like six girls into audition and they were all rejected. And actually I was a little ticked off that, that uh, you know, my friends didn't work out. That your opinion just couldn't count there, Yeah, right? yeah, it made me look bad. Uh -huh. So uh, I was being sarcastic and I said, well, let me try it. And uh, actually they, they called my bluff and said, yeah, go ahead. And really? I tried to call in sick and I tried <laughs> to change the key. And, uh, but well, they it worked got out. You. Yeah, yeah, they got me. They got <laughs> you can't. You really can't just evade what's supposed to happen. I know. Which is obviously with your career. Let's see, what did I want to say? Well, about singing, I mean, you really have to have a strong voice to sing small, which is actually the truth, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Which is not, not true that you can just whisper your way through, you know, singing, and that's the easiest way to go. Well, actually, I thought that, um, you know, I, I was fooling uh, David Lynch and Angelo Badalamente, and, and I thought, you know, I could go out and get a 20-year-old that could do this, that really looks great and angelic and, and sweet and beautiful and that, that could sing this. And then I auditioned a bunch of backup singers and I found out that they couldn't do it. So well, that was that You was learned gratifying. a lot from the, the yeah. incident yourself. 
Now, you, I found out a little bit about you through, you know, the people here at Warner Brothers, and I know you're from Iowa. Mm -hmm. And there's a rumor, which I really want to find out if they're joking me or not, but I find out that you were, your babysitter was Bob Newhart's receptionist? That's right. Or played her uh, uh, receptionist? Marsha Wallace. Right. She is wonderful. I love Marsha Wallace. And yeah. What was it like? At what age were, was she babysitting you? Oh, well, I, <clears throat> I think from around three to six. Was she just as much of a nut as she Yeah, is? she was a nut. She, that must have been a she wonderful a experience. But this was before her surgery. She had a, like a huge jaw. Oh. Really huge. Sorry, Marsha. Sorry to <laughs> let the cat out of the <laughs> bag, but we love you anyhow, wherever you are. <laughs>